because this topic for visual literacy and putting visual literacy in the context of uh, the post-truth era of uh, algorithmic uh, powered media, media environment is so huge, so, so huge. And because I know that many of you have a huge expertise in some of these topics and problems and issues, and because I'm really curious to hear from you and for you to exchange uh, your uh, practice and your questions, the things that are the burning questions that you just uh, want to discuss between uh, each other and with your students, I decided to take the approach of creating a library. So now, first, the first thing that I will do is to share with you a website. This is, uh, I hope that you will like the domain. Um, it's, it's a landing page with many articles and um, essays that are related to all the questions that were put into this webinar as key points from authorship to a defake, trust and truth, what we believe and why and everything else. Here, you will, you will have access to this landing page uh, and you can contribute to it if you would like to. There is embedded the presentation, the slides that I will now start and we'll run through it because I really hope to have enough time to discuss the things that you find most interesting, most problematic, most interesting in them. And we will have a breakout room uh, sandbox, I would call it, you know, this idea of sandboxes and uh, playing with, with some of these chatbots and AI bots is like playing in the sandbox. Uh, we'll play, discuss, and uh, I really, really invite you and encourage you to interrupt me, to ask questions, to put questions, to tell, oh, yes, that was the headline that was uh, probably gained my attention in the last month or the last two months, or this is a topic that we discussed with our students, how they reacted, what do you think, please, please interrupt me. At every stage, you will have access to everything. All these uh, digital assets will be openly shared. Um, yeah, and in the chat, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, Jeffrey, for sharing uh, Center of Human Technology yesterday. OK, the video, cool. Uh, Please put all the links in the chat and probably we'll after that decide how to organize uh, the resources that you share. Okay, so now um, I will share the slides because everything after all um, is there and probably the website before that. Uh, okay, here we are. And I hope that you're seeing the the website now. Looks good. Thank you. Great, great. This is the website. Here are all the resources with uh, the topic of today's session. It's about visual literacy and creativity and authorship. Visual literacy is one of the topics and the lectures that I uh, have with uh, students that I teach in the university, undergraduates. Uh, the course is on the European approach to media literacy and visual literacy, I have to say from experience, uh, short experience, but it's one of the preferred topics for the students and the perspective on, from which we discuss uh, visual literacy is the semiotics. So um, you will see in the slides, some of uh, probably some of the fundamentals of the, presentation that I use for students, but it's hugely expanded, updated uh, with added content. Um, I hope that you'll find interesting. So here the content I hope will uh, somehow uh, give you an idea 
to different aspects, different elements that are related to the visual literacy, the creativity, the creativity and the authorship and um, the copyright protection and the, um, these different aspects of expression that we now have with the, with the help and the protection of um, artificial intelligence. Uh, these are all aspects that can be a conversation starter, a discussion starter between practitioners, but also in the classroom. And what I believe in is that we have to, we have to find the time and to take some time to talk with students and to encourage them to experiment, to share their experience with artificial intelligence, no matter good or bad, but just to share and to get familiar with these tools because they are, most of them are really easy to use. Not every everything, of course, they're easy to use. And they could be scary, of course, you know, this uh, open letter that was published just last week from some signed from so many people, uh, seeing AI as a global risk. This is important approach. But at the same time, we have to be able to talk about the developments. They are so fast paced, but we need to talk about these developments in um, in a really wise, I think, uh, moderate, moderate way. So here is a history of visual communication, because I think that this is really This is really important to have the perspective of how the history of visual communication. And why is that? Because visual communication, all forms of communication are so closely related to the history and evolution of media. And as you know, all new media is uh, met with some moral panic. And this is a huge topic in relation to the artificial intelligence the moral panic, the techno panic, that uh, these new forms, these new media will uh, destroy societies, will, uh, you know, ruin the morals, children and young people and everything else. We, we have so many examples in the past, like with TV, with video games, and et cetera, et cetera. And after that, there is, here is the, probably because I, hmm, probably because I share the presentation, but here you will see the embedded slides that I will now turn to. And here are these all headlines and titles that I think that are relevant to the conversation that we'll have today. Uh, and the first one, uh, in fact, is a really good collection that I recommend to look at and to use for tools for research and writing. And they are really well, um, really well summarized. It is a educational uh, university website, so it's uh, authoritative. And after that, you can see some videos and some essays like toward an algorithmic pedagogy. Please tell me if you see a title or a headline that is you're familiar with. Um, AI are generator, uh, generator, this is a really interesting. We won't be able to use Adobe Firefly uh, today, but this is the answer to Mid Journey and to Dali of Adobe, and of course, it's interesting because it is uh, it is it is integrated into uh, the software for graphical um, for graphic graphic software that was used in the past, and it is still used for uh, so many great digital art, but also for shell effects. Probably, you know, the this distinction between shallow and deep fakes and it's interesting to see how people are vulnerable not only to deep fakes but also to shallow fakes and these are some topics for discussions because we have visual effects into cinema into visual media for so long and to visual effects we are creating things that are 
Um, <laughs> what is algorithmic pedagogy? It's great that you put this question. Uh, loud music? Uh, Divina, Jocelyn, would you please confirm that there is a uh, music uh, coming from my microphone? No, no, no. no. Um, someone possibly opened a link uh, oh. by mistake, and that's what was playing the loud music for <laughs> them. We yeah. can hear you loud and clear. Please continue. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and this is the example with Carrie Fisher. You know, she passed um, three or four years ago, but she will, was recreated into one of the Star Wars movies through visual effects. So these are ethical questions regarding what tools we can use and it's acceptable to use. Um, this is uh, a really short but really powerful uh, New York opinion, Times opinion video about deep fakes. Uh, with probably you think that this is Adele, it is not Adele. I believe that some of you know who is behind the face of Adele in this case. Uh, a scene from a British TV series that I couldn't recommend more. Just watch it. It's BBC. It's uh, the public service media of the United Kingdom, years and years. There is a scene that is really powerful and probably will just watch it in a minute. Uh, here are some interesting uh, examples of photography, really, really artistic photography, copyrighted photography, using uh, manipulation to recreate things that are not that seems so real, realistic, but are not. One movie about the age of AI. And here, uh, there are some uh, news articles and some videos regarding uh, some of the, you know, probably cases of use of artific artificial intelligence to create visual representation that put so many people into, so many people were um, um, tricked to believe that these things happened, like the case with the Trump uh, deepfake uh, arrest, the Pope with the white jacket, and uh, this one that even, even led to uh, some um, turbulence on the Wall Street regarding the Pentagon and the, the, the fake AI photo. Some uh, philosophical questions are there, like we are, you can see in many uh, uh, okay, uh, thank you, Davina. Uh, we we can see many metaphors used about artificial intelligence and the visual artificial intelligence, like that AI is hallucinating. Uh, but this is of course, I, I agree it is more about ChatGPT, but that AI is hallucinating. And this author uh, is explaining why this is not um, the proper term to use regarding AI. And other examples, and these uh, examples about the decisions of the US Copyright Office regarding what content that was created with the help of or entirely through uh, bots like Midjourney and tools like Midjourney can be copyrighted. And when we have human authorship, and some example with a comic book that is really interesting. And at the bottom, you can see a link to Understanding Media by Marshall McLuhan. You won't believe it, but there are some of the, um, some of the parts of the book that are all about visual media and visual literacy sound so up to date, so up to date. And this link, it's not a uh, copyright uh, infringement because this is open library. And do not mistake open AI with open library because open library is the project of uh, Internet Archive uh, where it is, a, it is a library where you can um, borrow books for a, a, an hour or two weeks and you can borrow the book from there. And now I will show you the presentation, just we'll run through it. <laughs> uh, please, Davina, um, interrupt me and tell me if there are questions that I'm missing into the chat, because you know I'm not. 
Yeah, so there's an interesting question that I think you yeah. should answer right away. Deborah Schneider asks, was the creation of this set of resources assisted by AI? Oh, I love this question. And uh, being transparent about the use of artificial intelligence is something that is put into the conversation about regulating AI. And of course, it's an ethical question that we need to discuss with students and among each other. For the resources, not. For the slides, not, not used. But I generated some prompts that I that that are shared. There's black box blocking the slides. Um, yeah, Glika, if you have your chat box on Zoom. Okay, we'll yeah, watch. yeah. Sorry about that. I know, I know. It's a buggy. Uh, sorry about that. So, uh, there are some prompts uh, like uh, for in, in chat GPT and perplexity. This is uh, perplexity is different from chat GPT. It's a chat bot, but it's not uh, so... Um, such such a good uh such a good talker i would say but it's providing uh, all the resources that it is using to generate answers so i will share all of them they are into the presentation uh with you and also we'll have some 10 or 5 minutes uh, just discussing some of the visual content that i prepared for today before you for yourself prepare prompt uh, mid-journey and uh, discuss the results. So what we'll have here is, again, from some philosophical questions, from some uh, theoretical frameworks, to some uh, legal um, developments, because these are important, because this legal development regulation is how we will try to find the balance between open internet, unregulated internet and internet governance, between freedom of expression and communicate, communication rights, uh, digital rights, between safety and between protection for human rights, for authorship and for copyright and all these really difficult to balance uh, things. Uh, so as I said, I believe that it will be more, um, I don't know, beneficial for you just to have the resources and decide what will be the enter entrance that you will use with students to discuss everything related to visual AI and to visual literacy. Uh, why these slides? Because these are results that Google, the good old Google, is providing with the uh, when you are searching uh, things like is Singh still believing, you can see how it is proposing different uh, questions. Um, the you, yeah, there might be some people who uh, could be on their phones. Is it possible to go to slideshow mode and blow up the slides? Of course. Sorry about screen? that. Yeah, of course. Is that better? Okay. Uh, these are the questions about the perspectives and what true and what truth is and how we will try just to, we, it's important to discuss uh, that people want to believe in their own truths, but it's through ethics and through education that will, and through values, value-based uh, media consumption and media interaction that will try to and hope that people will just prefer the truth that is in the society, in the interest of the whole society, if this is possible. This is an interesting example that just created so much curiosity and interest in me regarding the use of Midjourney at the Lee. Um, this is a question, an example that was provided by Dr. Hazan. She was at the time a chair of European on Air network association i hope probably you've heard about europeana this is a huge project about cultural heritage and europeana is organizing many uh discussions and webinars on uh, the use of artificial intelligence in cultural in, in in digitalizing uh cultural heritage in museums and glam as a whole these are some of the questions because, of course, uh, media literacy, media education is so much inquiry based. 
And I think, and hopefully, uh, this is this could also be a conversation starter. Now these bots are pushing us to ask questions, so much to ask questions, more than in the search engines. So this is good because getting better in asking questions is good from the media literacy perspective. Uh, and good prompts are providing interesting results. Uh, I have to say, tell you that this disclosure that some of these slides are original slides from this uh, um, PowerPoint um, PowerPoint uh, team that I used for the, converse, the, the presentation. That was one of them. This is another uh, one. Uh, and here I changed the image because, of course, we all now um, are worried that even if we speak the same language, because of all this information and the different ways of uh, uh, interacting with it, with different levels of critical thinking, of logical thinking, and because of the disinformation and misinformation and the influence, the foreign influence, and all of these problems that we have with our even, even, even the mature democracies experience some turbulences. The question is, are we living the bubble uh, mid now or something and how to overcome that? Uh, so here are two videos, I won't stop on them. But they are the first one is video killed the radio star, and the other one is a, a one video of Fat Boy Slim. These are really cool conversation starters with students because the first is a question, uh, probably, of uh, how uh, the evolution of media. Every time we have uh, interruptive new media, disruptive new media, we think that it will kill the previous one. The sound, the video will kill the sound so on and so on. And we can now see that this was just uh, a moral panic, examples of this. And a huge part of in the middle of this presentation and my approach to visual literacy, that is to me really useful to talk about artificial intelligence and the co-shared authorship in the creative arts into visual art is the perspective of semiotics. So here you have some um, examples, some um, quotations, huge names into the field like Alan Pavio, uh, some short and visualized, of course, explanations of the, the, the framework of semiotics, especially from the visual perspective. Uh, I hope that you will find this interesting and I don't know, um, from the perspective of teaching and um, leading discussions with students, I hope that this could be really uh, find some place uh, into your classrooms and into your libraries. So uh, I think that something written from Barsha McLuhan so long time ago, it's interesting just to stop for 10 seconds to read it. That today, this today is, you know, 60 years ago. Today, it is inconceivable that any publication, daily or periodical, could hold more than a few thousand readers without pictures. For both the pictorial ad or the picture story provide large quantities of instant information and instant humans, such as are necessary for keeping abreast on our kind of culture, would it not seem natural and necessary that the young people, this is, sorry about that, it's uh, not the end of the question, that the young are not teached into visual uh, literacy is the continuation. Uh, some definitions uh, of visual literacy, I think that are good to go through. Some questions about the origins of image, these are, uh, relevant still for the time of Marshall McLuhan and all these um, uh, visual magazines and, and newspapers, but also now, even now. These are frameworks regarding media literacy, media information literacy, and how visual literacy is positioned among many other 
literacy. That is why we are talking about transmedia literacy or also multiliteracy and why we need to talk about uh, uh, transmedia narratives and transmedia storytelling. Uh, these are examples where not artificial intelligence were used and that led to huge implications in some democratic societies. These are the narratives, they are visualized, but it's important to look 10 years ago and remember how people were manipulated through these messages, why they were manipulated, what fears were touched through these messages. Of course, some of the resources that I learned through the Media Education Lab <laughs> uh, and some of the photos that is um, probably you could start discussion from them. They are, they, they are documentary photo, photos, but they could be uh, easily recreated through artificial intelligence, created from the very beginning from artificial intelligence. This is an example for semiotics and how we interpret visual information, like the pale blue dot, and now I will go to artificial intelligence, the pale blue dot. What is the meaning of this little dot? If you've never heard about Carl Sagan, for example, or Voyager, and what it means if you have this back information, and what are the different ways that we are touched from content, if it's visual or it's audio content. And here you can hear the file with the voice of Carl Sagan and just listen to it. Uh, and here, okay, now I hope it will become uh, interesting. Here you have two examples on the left and on the right, recreated by different algorithms. The left one, the left one is uh, Mid Journey was prompted just to imagine something that was called pale blue dot in the context of how this phrase was used by Carl Sagan. And on the right side, in the left side is Mid Journey. On the right side, you have a generated artificial AI art created by Dali. This is the algorithm of OpenAI, the same uh, organization, the same company that is developing ChatGPT and Whisper. And here, okay, I will stop here. What we are seeing on this image, please just switch your microphone and just try to explain what Dali generated here. Was Dali given the same prompt? Uh, the one that was given to the Mid Journey? Mid -journey. Mm -hmm. No, it, no. Uh, yeah, this is an interesting experiment, and I did it. I will show you some examples of the same prompt, different algorithms, but in this case, it's a different prompt. It's a different prompt. Okay, it's it's crazy and impossible one, I have to tell you. And interesting part of using AI for visual art is that you could put on the prompt things that could never happen, that are not, you know, you can never experience and see in real life. You will be able to compare the two because I will share with you all the prompts, all the results that were generated with the same prompt. Okay, um, I will show you. I will just show you. Uh, ah, yeah, I see that it's not comparable, but the question was, can you guess what was the prompt that generated this building with this individual there, person, uh, and what is there? What just is there? Is the, is the man on in the right side, the, the picture on the right, is that Sagan? Yes! It, it, looks, it looks like Sagan. Yeah. Yes, yes, he is. I, yeah. Okay. So where is he? 
Well, then maybe, sorry. Go ahead, Jamina. Maybe the prompt was uh, the blue dot as Carl Sagan describes it. Yeah, yeah, really close. It's really close because um, you have to give some um, some clear instructions. It could be abstract. You could add add some abstract idea to the prompt, but you have to be really um, up to point for some of the elements that you want to have there. So it's Carl Sagan watching through the window in the night sky, but the moon is changed. It, it, instead of the moon, it's it is the pale blue dot that he's watching into. There's, there, there's something that's racing by Earth that's traveling. Yeah. Whether it's going to come into Earth, I don't know, but it's definitely racing. Yeah. And yeah, how, the, how the the, um, the color goes from a very dark blue and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. It, it almost reminds me of a chemtrail from a jet plane. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that like, there are conspiracy theories about chemtrails, in, oh, especially no. in Europe. You know that? <laughs> oh, no, I, I didn't. It's a huge story. Oh, my God. And in Bulgaria, it's a craziness about chemical weapons that are spread to the yeah 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 it's true the other thing about where Carl Sagan is it's it's an it's it's the the windows and he's actually sticking his head yeah. he's on the outside he's sticking himself outside the window so yeah there's no um screen or glass mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. then the the rest of it and it's two stories, it looks like, or he's on the upper level of one room. Um, yeah. It's an interesting way. Of, and his house, because I live in Ithaca, his house is was, because he's not alive anymore, right over the Ithaca Falls. He, he could probably see Ithaca Falls from his house, which is a, a few blocks from, from Cornell. Oh. You know. Yeah, but, that is, yeah. <laughs> These but, are important. It, I'm trying. It, it it looks like it's more of a you know a school building, the downstairs the way it it is. Agree. The building is really interesting, and yeah. no one knows why Dali decided to to generate this building. It, it has a televisiony look to it, in in a way. It has that, that look of a television. I, I and I'm not saying a flat screen, but there's something about it. That reminds me of the television. <laughs> yeah, this is interesting interpretation and reading. Reading against the grid. Thank you so much. Um, and as I promised to show some images oh, here, some. can you recognize someone else, someone that you know among these images? These are all generated mm -hmm. by Dali these with different cool. prompts. Perhaps probably. In yeah. Okay this one oh my goodness <laughs> yeah yeah i know <laughs> can you imagine that and even the lee uh just calculated that the age of professor hobbs has to be she has to be younger to be with uh marshall mcclone together because i didn't extract it the lee to generate a younger version of professor hobbs then yeah yeah. Uh, and some more examples here. This is Mid Journey. And it, uh, Mid Journey has this really recognizable style. So on the left is again some prompts with Neil Postman and Marshall McLuhan and some um, elements of uh, visual media and television, electronic media. Uh, and on the right side, I did the same with my supervisor, Professor Nelly Vnyanova. And she recognized herself without telling her that she is on the pictures with Neil Postman and Marshall McLuhan here. Here she is. He's, she is probably the same age as Professor Hobbs. Some more, some more prompts. And now I will stop that and will show you. Are you seeing the Discord server that I'm showing?
are you seeing these prompts now with the images? Yes. Great. So here they are, and I will share them all with you, all the prompts, all the results, uh, and some examples of things that you could use, even if you're teaching a different subject, not media education or media literacy, like math and physics, and to generate some visualizations, visualizations like uh, Pythagorean theorem, and to discuss them with your students. Uh, also recreating some uh, things like the history of mass media and moral panic and just discuss why, why Midjourney produced these results. Uh, and here are the prompts I just shared. And here now I will invite you to the breakout rooms. Uh, it was from the slideshow that was, um, Jeffrey, I'm not quite sure. Uh, if I'm reading correct. Yeah, I, I fixed it. It was, uh, I had your slideshow open in my browser and it switched to the Fat Boy Slim uh, slide and started ah, playing. I see. <laughs> I see, I see, I see, I uh, see. Some more examples about uh, talking about the apocalyptic part of artificial intelligence. Uh, and here is what we will do now. Probably we have only 10 minutes, unfortunately, but we'll, it's enough. It's enough, I think. So we'll go into the breakout rooms. I will visit all the breakout rooms one after another. We'll use Midjourney, this one that is a bot installed into a Discord server. If you're using Discord, if you have a server, it is free for the use. You can invite the Midjourney bot and start experimenting with it and invite your students, of course. So we'll use Midjourney to generate images. Uh, Midjourney always creates four versions for one prompt. So we'll discuss and formulate a prompt in your room, whatever topic you want to. We'll choose one of the four results. I will produce the results and we'll show it to you. And you will choose one of the four results to be placed on a slide, in the slide, in the presentation. And after that, we'll play a game that I call prompt or dare. And you will try to guess what was the prompt of some of the other teams seeing the result into the slides. And just probably for a minute or two, just interpret what you're seeing or sharing what was the idea behind the original prompt. Because as you can see, the interesting part with Midjourney and with this AI algorithm is that you have some idea, you, 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 formulate a prompt and the result could be really surprising and really distant to your idea. But after that, you play another game uh, with yourself when you're trying to, uh, to find explanation to the result. And all this procedure of this process is really, really, I would say, um, useful to introduce topics regarding media literacy, how we create inquiry, how we discuss the messages, how we discuss the sender and, and the idea of the sender. Uh, hmm, Divina, you ask a question. Uh, does anyone want to answer this question? Do you have opinion about it? Or you just want to jump on the breakout rooms and start this game? Breakout room. OK, uh, would you help me? Uh, yep. They're all set up and ready to go. So I'll go ahead and assign folks. Thank you. And I will visit you all. I will visit you all. I think that it was a mistake not to report it's a definite boo-hoo that we would have liked more time. <laughs> <laughs> always, you know, always. Yeah, it, is. It, it, it Which is great, but it's like, what do you mean we only have 10 minutes for the breakout and we have to leave in a few minutes? Yeah, we are in a fast-paced society, in fast-paced reality. Yeah. And I will now, I will now show you two results. And meanwhile, because I was not able to take the prompt from one, 
if you have any idea, we can just demo how <laughs> Midjourney is recreating it. That is, you know. Uh, okay. Here it is. We're waiting. Are you seeing? Are you seeing? Oh, look at that. It's lovely. Yeah. These are the four versions of the same prompt. One prompt, four versions. And here's the other one. I can see that you're thinking probably in a similar direction, but that is all I will say. Now. Which, which program did you use to do that? It's Midjourney. Midjourney. It's, it's Midjourney. It's Midjourney. Thank you. So the, the people that didn't participate into the room that created this. You can try to guess yeah. what was the prompt. What was the prompt? It, it, it had to be the wildfires. It has to be fire. Smoky New York. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look crowded enough to be New York City. Not enough buildings on the shoreline. Uh, this is there's really... that Staten Island ferry that that must be how it thinks it represents New York. Like I see it in two of the, the four pictures. Like ferry. this must be New York because there's the ferry. <laughs> the they top should... right, the top right one looks like New York to me, but on the Jersey side, it looks like there's a really tall building. Yeah. Which I don't. It's not. Doesn't exist on the Jersey side. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. The real estate is cheaper on that side than the Manhattan yeah. side. But I live, I live on the Hudson, and yesterday we couldn't see across right. the river. We couldn't see it; just didn't exist. It was so foggy or smoky. 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 Yeah. And the color is quite accurate if it's New York, because yeah. yesterday the red, I understand it was reddish. We had yellow up here. Yeah, it was yellow. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, because we are lying, oh, lying behind a little bit, I, I would love to stay, but I know that you all have uh, the, the day in front of you. This is the second one. It's, it's even this more. Is it's... It, that's very scary. That looks more like a California, a California or Northwest, North, uh, um, Northwest in the Pacific area from last year. The escape from uh, yeah. Although I'm thinking, you know, how does it? How is it saying it's Canada? And I see, okay, we have a little cabin in the woods. It must be Canada or pine trees, which are also in Northern California, but. Pine trees, it must be Canada. <laughs> I'm trying to think, how is it trying? Maybe that license plate on that car is Canadian. <laughs> it, that looks like a Mercedes. The car looks like a Mercedes. <laughs> but, but it could be Oregon or Washington, too, because last year yeah. and the year before, they had terrible fires. And that that reminds me of that. And and the, um, the, the city in California, Palisades, something with a P, I think the year before that, or a couple of years ago, people died because of P, P, G, and E. So curious Paradise. about the prompt. Did they say forest fire or wildfire? I mean, that must have been something besides fire because it's not a structural fire. Okay, I think that the best thing that I could do now is just to show you how Midjourney generated, what prompts were used to generate these results. And it's interesting that you're thinking in a similar direction and you're news hunting. Wild and, and of course, probably you would believe, would you believe some of these images was created yeah, like a real photo? Smoke over the Hudson River in New York. So <laughs> you were correct with that one. Yeah. And show the impact from wildfires in Nova Scotia is the second one. But in some ways, both, well, New York, though, that doesn't look like New York City to me with the build. There's not hardly any buildings. The other one, you know, this one, yeah, it could be Nova Scotia, but it could even be the Northwest. I mean, it, it's, it has a very generic yeah. quality to it, giving people an opportunity if they have experienced that or, or have seen images that they would understand, you know, they, you know especially the car going toward the fire. 
That's and that's what's interesting about New York. It's not all the skyscrapers and buildings. There are areas of forest and openness still. Yeah, well, I live upstate New York, and well, they're putting pretty ugly buildings up, but yeah. Just a second, just a second to point you to this command. The car is driving towards the fire. Yeah. This algorithm is still doing mistakes with three hands, four legs, ears, eyes. It's important to tell this to students, but also they are getting better and better. Yeah. And they're not always doing these mistakes because two years ago, we all knew that uh, guns are not good at generating gears and eyes. This changed. You cannot mm -hmm. rely on this, but at the same time, it's important to take these examples and just to push students and people to, to, to interpret, to read, to decode the message and to ask questions to ourselves. What is wrong here? What is wrong here? Why this? This is happening, you know? So this is a really good, I didn't expect this result, but this is a good one. And I will, of course, share all, all the results with you. We will generate the bigger image from these four can be regenerated as a standalone images. You know, but Iglika, we don't know what's behind the car, why it's driving that way. It could be worse the fire behind them could be pushing them. Yeah. But maybe they know the way and they have hope that they will find when they curve around, curve a curve, or they, they can make a right or a left and go to the left side, which looks a little bit less fiery than the right side. So. No, but did you see Katie's chat? She says, if my kid needs rescue, I'm driving into the fire. <sighs> Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So many, so many thoughts and, you know, uh, interpretations and just explanation what's happening. This is what we do as humans. We always try to find explanation and mm -hmm. to anthropomorphize things that are going, even if the algorithms are not capable of it. Uh, I know that we run out of time and I, I, totally that was totally not enough for me i know that um as i said everything will be shared with all of you you can true. use it and i will be extremely uh thankful grateful if you share in a month or two or three if you use something if you find something useful uh that is why i love so much the lab the media education lab and all this um uh, because we can discuss uh, in every discussion uh, something so wise and so humanistic is born from your perspective. Uh, I, how I'm sharing, I will upload everything to this website that I put into the very beginning. You will have access to it. You will have access to the slides. So I will put them into the slides. You can download it. You can use them. If you need something also, please tell me into the next month, I can generate for you some visuals <laughs> so we can use it. Um, and again, um, hopefully, because we are a network, we are a community. It's not only on the webinars that we are in touch, just please share, just share your experiences and your approaches and, uh, your impressions from your students, how they use uh, these tools. Uh, yeah, and, and that's it <laughs> for today. It's run so quick. Thank you so much, Iglika, and thank you all for staying on a little bit later. Our next thank session you. is on the 20th of this month. Hope to see you all there very soon. Have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. 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 See you soon, hopefully. Bye-bye. <laughs>